Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. Today we're taking a look at a new 75% from Vitor. Um, Vitor and Fecker, I'm not sure if they're the same company, but I've seen, well, I've seen Vitor, Iwan, and Fecker. But this keyboard in particular was sent out to me by WhatGeek, which is a great provider. They have such the selection of keyboards. like. One day I decided to like go through their catalog and I wasn't able to make it all the way through. <laughs> there were so many keyboards and there was like keyboards I'd never seen before that I had to go and look up. Um, so it's just quite interesting, but they did, they reached out to me and they were like, would you like to take a look at this one? And I'm like, absolutely, because I've taken a look at another, a couple other Vitors or rebranded Vitors and I've liked every one of them. So um, I do know that a certain company that starts with E, uh, does rebrand and sell them, but as many of you know, I suggest that people avoid that company, but that's neither here nor there. We're taking a look at the 75% from Vitor, and it does have an interesting layout. Um, looks like it has a knob. I'm not sure if that's a knob or a screen, but we're going to go ahead and find out. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the Vitor K75 75% keyboard. As always, I do like to take a look at see what's included in the box before taking a look at the keyboard. It looks like we have a pretty hefty um, manual here that goes through the different functionality. It does look like we have a three mode and it does look like we have a screen and it's a knob and a screen. So this one's actually very reminiscent of um, a low profile I recently reviewed. I cannot believe I can't remember the model number of it right now, but this is a normal profile of that, and it actually it appears to have a couple better, more features that make it better, but we'll see once we get there. It's got a standard wired rubberized uh, USB-C, the USB-A cable. We have a standard wire switch and keycap puller, and we have a couple of extra switches, K-Top 75 use. Let me see what these are. So it looks like this is not only a gasket mount, but it looks like they've provided screws so that we could do a top mount as well. Very nice. I always like when we're given options of mounting styles. Put those away so we don't lose them. Let's check out what switches we have here. Oh, these are Huanas. I've actually, I've always kind of had a fondness for Huanas. Even their OEM, you know, cheapy ones, I think they sound pretty good but this is a nice long pull linear. It has a marbly glassy bottom mount, and I would guess probably a 3.6 millimeter travel. They are made of a darker, darker pink bottom and a lighter pink top with a white long pull stem. And I'm gonna guess by the sound it's palm, but I'll have to look up the specs. And here we are with the Vitor K75. And I've got to say, this is actually pretty nice. I do always appreciate when they include a dust cover with their keyboard. This one, especially because it has the logo, their name of their keyboard. Granted, um, that shape is probably going to be pretty easy to recognize and say, I know what keyboard that goes to. But for your standard size keyboards, it's nice because, you know, not all keyboards are the same dimension. So if you have a brand on there, it's the same thing like with the uh, 2.4 dongle which, uh, let me guess, it's under here. Did they brand that one as well? Oh, fingers crossed they did. Oh, you lift up. Yes, they do. So thank you, Vitor, for uh, not only branding your dust cover, but also branding the 2.4 gigahertz dongle. If for some reason this gets, you know, falls out or something and we find it, it's gonna be a lot more likely the chance that we're going to find the right keyboard for it. Let's go ahead and put the dust cover aside and check out what we've got. We have a very nice chunky build. I, I definitely like um, the design on this, the lines on this. We have an on and off switch with the USB-C port there. So I'm gonna guess the wireless modes are probably done through key combinations or through the, the screen because the screen does seem to be a bit of a control center. Whoa, it's a clicky knob. So it's a step knob and that is I gotta say I like that click <laughs> he who doesn't really 
enjoy clicky switches, but I enjoy a clicky knob. Go figure, right? <laughs> we do have a very interesting key cap set. I'm going to say, I'm going to guess that's an M MDA. No, MDA is flat. So this is an MOA, I think. I will have to confirm the spec section as, as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at these. I do believe they're double shot. Yep. And they are PBT. They do feel actually quite nice. Legends on there are nice, though. Shift and wind do seem to have different. Ah, maybe it's just my, oh, it's the spacing. The kerning is different so that it fits differently on the key. That's what it is. It's the same font. It's just that there's less space between between each letter and the shift than there is in, on the other letters. All right. That's not that big of a deal. Let's see how thick these key caps are. Ooh, 1.6 millimeters in thickness. That's a very nice thickness for a key cap, especially with, um, I don't know, I like these. Uh, I mean, they're sculpted in as far as the key cap set or the whole profile sculpted, but there's also sculpted keys where they have you know, a nice little shape to them where the single keys like SAs and the MT3s, they have that nice curved top. It's almost like hugging your fingertips and I really like that. All right, so here we've got that Huano switch that I'll still have to look up and we have what I like to refer to as holy panda stabs because those are the colors on them. But let's see how well they're attached first. Oh, these are like almost like they feel like they're almost part of the plate. They barely wiggle. Let's go ahead and take them off. All right. We do have just enough lubrication. Uh, it doesn't seem to be any on the wires, but we do have it on the... There doesn't seem to be any on the elbows, but we definitely have some inside the stems and on the wire in there. Well, that's fine. We can see the PET layer. Oh, and yes, we do have the ability for screwing stabilizers. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Thank you, Vitor, for that. I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Vitor. I, I feel like um, there was an old SNL skit. Um, Dana Carvey, I think it was one of them, they were like a German dance show. And I want to say that one of the characters' name was Vitor or something like that. Like, Sprockets, Sprockets, Best German Television presents Sprockets. Meet your host, Dieter. I can't remember. Now, now that's going to be bugging me. I'm going to have to look that up. It was a German, like, retro. Everybody was dressed in black with the hair slicked back. SNL 90s. And most of you are staring at the screen going, what is he talking about? What's an SNL? <laughs> so we do have what looks like the high fine layers, which is the PET layer right above the PCB with the IXPE. Surprised that it doesn't go there and add a little bit of padding for the stabilizers, but that's no big deal. Um, so this is definitely one I will come back to at some point and we'll put in some uh, plate mounted or plate screw in stabilizers and see how much of a difference that makes. It does look like we have a gasket mounted PC plate with flex cut and um, based on the screws, and that'll also be something we'll take a look at when we come back to it what's the different what will be the difference between a stock mounting gasket style and a top mounting um i think top mount in most keyboards will give a little bit more of a deeper tone it still gives you that flex not as much as a gasket but usually it, I, it really depends on the keyboard i hate saying something and it you know because not everything applies to all keyboards because there's so many different construction methods materials foams and everything like that so we'll have to find out for ourselves now we do have this protective layer over the screen i will have to cut a piece of film to protect it but i want to take it off right now because it kind of looks ugly let's go ahead and stick these stabilizers back in their place make sure they're locked nice tolerances on there i didn't have to fight with it all right let's get a quick preview of what this sounds like
That is definitely nice. I am liking how this keyboard sounds. Stock. It's one of the uh, nicer ones of the plastic 75% variants. Though I will say that screen is probably leaning on me a little bit because I really like it. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see what we've got. So we have a boot animation and we have the screen. It looks like we'll have to change it over to English. All right, let's see. Oh, looks like I'm going to have to read the manual on this one. I don't see how it works. All right. So this function plus pressing on the knob will enter the control mode, but all right, let's get to the language. All right, so I found that in order for English to show up, we have to apply a firmware update. So I went ahead and downloaded the link. It's on the product page for WebKey, but I'll put a link down below. Now, we're going to want to run the royantool.exe, but we're going to want to run it as administrator. This way, we will get the screen where it says upgrade. Go ahead and hit the upgrade button. Make sure that you're either on a UPS or on a laptop with battery charge. You do not want this failing in the middle of the upgrade. Now, this upgrade um, does add the English language to the screen. Uh, so if you so if you speak English, this is going to be something that you're going to want to do if you want to be able to control the screen. And once updated, we can see that English is now an option or language is now an option on the screen. So we can go ahead and switch to that. Just the specs. Today we are taking a look at the Viter K75 Pro. It is an 83 key, three mode, 75% with an F13 or delete key and a round knob screen combination that also includes a four key boxed navigation cluster. It is loaded with a gasket mounted flex cut PC plate, a three and five pin south facing PCB complete with hi-fi layers and plenty of dampening. It is preloaded with Wano Beater Bloom linear switches it is also preloaded with double shot PBT keycaps in the MDA profile that come measuring in at 1.6 millimeters of thickness. It is preloaded with a 5,000 milliamp hour capacity battery and comes weighing in at 850 grams. The chin of this keyboard sits at 23 millimeters above the typing surface while the back sits at 30, providing for a default typing angle of 6 degrees. Flipping out the first set of included feet will take the back height to 30 millimeters, changing the angle of typing to 8 degrees. Flipping out the final set of fold down feet will take the back height to 42 millimeters and provide an angle of typing of 11 degrees. This keyboard MSRP is for $99.99 on What Geek's website. Links below. So the driver install is pretty straightforward. Uh, this is a familiar software. I've seen it with different brands. So we have the main or the top layer. It looks like some keys are allowed to be modified and some are not. And what they have as layer on the side truly means profiles. So it looks like when you look at the function section that you can flip between these three different profiles, um, though I think that they also consider them modes like for operating systems. Now in the function settings, we see that we can remap. And as we see the CXC is profile exchanges already. Um, and we can uh, change the win and the alt function. So I will have to take a look further look into that. The keys that are in red on the function settings are ones that cannot be remapped as they are already there for specific reasons like the mode switching for the connectivity. But we can see on delete, I went ahead and made the function underneath it to be mapped to insert. And we can also do multiple configurations per keyboard. Now for macros, we have a very basic macro editor like we've seen on other keyboards where we can hit macro, hit start, start typing, then hit stop. And then we can go through and edit the milliseconds, delete keys, change keys around, do whatever we'd like in order to get the macro just to where we'd like to have it. 
then we can go back and map it to a function combination. Now for the screen, we do have a synchronized time on screen, which does work immediately. Then we can go through and select a GIF animation uh, from our photos. And in this one, I decided to get this, um, I believe it's called a Nexus. I think this was the um, animation for the Nexus devices before there were pixel, I could be wrong, but it does allow you to adjust the size of the image. I just went ahead and centered it as this is a portrait image for the RAND screen, the rest of it just becomes black. Once the frames are all separated out, we can go ahead and upload animation to keyboard. Now this did take some time, but most of the uh, screen update software will take a little time to get the image up because we're probably dealing either with slow RAM or it's doing a lot of double checking to ensure that no bits or bytes were lost during the transfer process. Once we're done, we can go to the lighting section. We see that we can select from the pre-installed custom light effects. We can set the speed as well as the brightness. And I think Dazzle just makes it come on and off if I'm not mistaken. But we have under light edit is where we can do our per key RGB and we can set the color for every key that we'd like to. We can actually use a picture to set a palette as well. Once we're done, we can actually save them to the layer and save the static like effect. And it will be found later on under my work. This is one of the software packages recently that have their own online system where you can share as well as download other users shared light effects as well as macros. Now on the uh, about tab we have where we can update both the app and the firmware. You see the red dot, we click it, we update it. I've already updated it so unfortunately I've seen this I think it's a bug some of them continue to show that there needs an update even if it's already at the latest version I gotta say this is the first feeder I've taken a look at our brand feeder I should say but I quite like it software is basic but it's one that if you've gone through a few keyboards you've seen it before because it's one of the few that is kind of used across the industry by different manufacturers um, or brands I should say but we have a decent keyboard and has enough keys in my opinion because not only do we have the four keys here it may not be in a column it's in a square we also have the F13 or delete key um, we have a pretty cool round knob that we can update with an animation or just a static image we have a nice set of key camps that have some really nice clean big legends as I like them and pretty bright RGB. We have a decent sized battery. We have a nice little pocket for the 2.4 gigahertz dongle. Um, and we have it available in a couple of colorways, I think three or four, I believe. But this being a, a keyboard with the high fi layers, it's going to be one of those keyboards that again, I don't think there'll be too many people that'll be wanting to take it out of the box and mod it. I think many people will be happy with the default sound profile. Anyway, I'll definitely be coming back to this at some point. I, uh, I'd i like to see if I can get a different sound profile out of it, though this is one that I think I'm going to, to test drive or run it as my daily because I do like it. I actually I've been getting a little bit more fonder of MOA keycaps lately and I've bought probably more than I should have. Anyway, um, if you guys have any questions, any comments, anything, please leave them down in the section comments below. I do my best to get to them as quickly as possible. I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with the stock sound test of the Peter K75 Pro. I want to wish you beautiful people out there a wonderful rest of your day. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.